Hey gang, Rob here. It is the afternoon of 30 September 2022. Coming to you this afternoon on a brilliant, sunshiny, 65 degree day in Northeast Indiana. It's amazing outside. I'm coming to you today with my latest installment in my series of top 10 lists of pop culture over the last half century or so. Today's installment, the top 10 greatest rock and roll bands in music history. A list that is bittersweet <clears throat> because it's music that I love, but it's a genre that let's face it is all but dead. Yes, we were told for our entire lives that rock and roll would never die, but oh gosh, it's pretty much dead. Pains me, it, it grieves my heart. <clears throat> but anyway, it was so wonderful while I was here. So today's list includes bands that have to meet some certain criteria. First, I must like their music. It's my list. It's a subjective thing. And most of these bands are kind of old. Most of them include members that are older than I am. Do I still listen to them? Their music has to hold up. That's the first thing. It's got to hold up. Not only was it good when I was in high school, but it's good now. Some of these bands came after I was out of high school, but not many. Next, their music has to be historically significant. Did it change the genre? Next, musically, from a musicianship standpoint, they had to be skilled. They had to be virtuosos. And on a similar note, not only do they have to do mostly original music, but they had to be able to write not only melodies, not only arrangements, but lyrics. Let's face it, guys. In the history of music, rock and roll, not particularly known for cerebral lyrics, but they at least have to not suck, right? They have to mean something. In fact, one of the bands in this list I'm probably going to catch heat for because they're lower than most people would place them purely because their lyrics weren't very good. And then let's see, next. Well, they had to be big stars. Big, big stars. Legends, if you will. So let's see. Let's get into it, shall we? First up, at number 10, on the list of the top 10 greatest rock and roll bands of all time. I will catch heat for this because they're not higher. Because there are two bands from this sub-genre on my list. Most people would put this band above the other, but not me. Leonard Skinner at number 10. Not only were they great musicians, they certainly personified a sub-genre of rock, which was Southern rock. It was blues based. It had searing guitars. It had emotional vocals of very high quality from, from Ronnie Van Zandt. Uh, it was just, it's music that takes you back to from where it came, right? I think that the status of Leonard Skinner in rock and roll history is elevated because of the tragedy that took the lives of the core members of that band. <clears throat> but certainly they deserve to be on this list. I got them at number 10. Number nine, a band that was made up of world travelers from England to Australia to much of their career played in the United States. A band that contributed to the soundtrack of my youth. If you had a party in the mid-1980s, early 1980s, and it was lagging, and it needed an injection to take it to the party level it needed to be. Well, there were two albums you could put on, one of which by an honorable mention band on this list, 
and one of the one of them by this band A C D C. Fronted by two great singers, Bon Scott until his death, then Brian Johnson, who may have surpassed his predecessor. One of the great voices in rock and roll history on my list of top 10 male vocalists. Then you had the brothers Young, Angus and Malcolm, lead and rhythm guitars. Certainly the best brother guitar combination in the history of rock and roll. But let's face it, guys. You got Highway to Hell. You got Back in Black. You got You Shook Me All Night Long. Rock and roll ain't noise pollution. <clears throat> the list goes on. That's number nine. Number eight, the Almond Brothers. Yes, I, I place them higher on my list than Leonard Skinner. I think mu from a musicianship standpoint, the Almonds are superior. You had, a, you had a great lead guitarist in Dwayne Almond. You had a superb co-lead or rhythm guitarist in Dickie Betts. You had Greg Almond, piano slash keyboard player extraordinaire when it comes to the blues and blues-based rock and roll. And truly, Greg was one of the whitest men on earth, but my goodness, could he sing the blues. And he got sober within a year of, of my date, so he and I are kind of linked musically and in life. So yeah, the Allman Brothers, number eight. Number seven, and this will get me heat. Most people talk about this band vying for the number one spot <clears throat> on any list, not me. It's the Beatles. They're only on my list because so many people regard them so highly. I think I would be remiss if I left them off, but just not very good. Average musicians, one really good guitarist in George Harrison, a pretty good drummer in Ringo, but let's face it, John Lennon had a weak voice. Paul McCartney had a better voice. They couldn't write a lyric to save their lives. Here's my case in point. If you doubt me, explain this. The movement you need is on your shoulder. That lyric, that phrase, that statement has been explained by Paul McCartney. They had nothing to put there, so they just mailed it in. It sort of rhymed. The, the greatest bands in history don't produce a song with filler verbiage that means nothing. Anyway, uh, they were significant. They were the tip of the spear of the British invasion. Girls liked them. They had matching hair. Pretty average musically, but they're on the list. Number six, <clears throat> a band that was a contemporary of those Beatles. And the name of the band started with the same first three letters, but this band. Musically, lyrically, vocally, far, far superior to the Beatles. And it took, this band took on many forms over the years as its leader suffered through rather severe mental issues, but what a composer. If you were gonna do a list of the top 10 composers of all time in any genre, Brian Wilson probably makes the list. So yes, The Beach Boys, number six. Now I'm Midwestern guy. So the beach songs, I like them, <clears throat> I appreciate them, but the car songs, man, the car songs. Best instrument in any Beach Boys song? 409 Chevrolet V8. I can remember as a kid, turning up dead stereo, turning it up, <clears throat> push and play. You know the sound, you know the sound. I still listen to them today. Number five, from the UK. Named after their monarch is Queen. Queen. Ah. Oh. Wow. Okay, let's just run them down, right? <clears throat> Definitely a top 10 guitarist in Brian May. Could do anything with those six strings. 
Roger Taylor. I haven't done a list of top 10 drummers yet, but you can bet he'll be on it. Interesting factoid, though, as told by Brian May. Roger Taylor was not the timekeeper in Queen. The human metronome was the timekeeper. His name, Freddie Mercury, who is on my list at number one in the greatest male rock singers of all time. And then old John Deacon playing the bass. Uh, their production was just plain the best there is. You go back and listen to albums from Queen from 40 or 50 years ago and listen to them on good equipment and then compare them to contemporary music. The production of Queen is unbelievable. They were as good live as they were in the studio. And when it came to performing live, Freddie has no peer. Watch the Live Aid concert. <clears throat> he has no peer. That's number five, Queen. Number four, Fleetwood Mac. You talk about music that holds up. Now, maybe it didn't change music. Fleetwood Mac might have been their own subgenre. But their longevity, their diversity, the way that warring personalities somehow stayed together over the years and produced music full of conflict and angst and they pulled it off <clears throat> and musicianship lindsey buckingham was recently rated number 100 in the list of top 100 guitarists of all time he's better than that no and he, again he's his own style uh john mcvee killer bassist and nobody thinks of this guy, but Mick Fleetwood, one of the best drummers of all time. And then vocally, oh my gosh, you have Lindsey, you got Christine, and you have, I think, what a top two or three female vocalist of all time in Stevie Nicks. And their music, mm. now you could, you could put Stevie in the same category as the Beatles when it comes to writing lyrics, but... In fact, Christine McVie once said, I have no idea what she's talking about. <laughs> but you, you just got to cut her some slack because she's Stevie. So yeah, number four, top 10 rock and roll bands of all time, Fleetwood Mac. Number three, and I've been a little bit down this rabbit hole in the last few months, kind of going back. Uh, Looking at the early stuff, especially. Ah, sort of a latecomer in the British invasion, but let's face it, guys. <clears throat> in terms of heavy album rock and roll of the late 60s, early 70s, there's one band, and then there's everybody else. Led Zeppelin. John Bonham. John Paul Jones, Jimmy Page, and Robert Plant. I kind of have gone back and forth over the years with Robert Plant and his vocal prowess, but he's up there, guys. He's absolutely up there. Jimmy Page, a guitar scientist. True, true enough. Um, later in his career, last couple Zeppelin albums and then after, his ability to perform significantly hampered by drug use, but oh my gosh, the early stuff. And he was sort of the, the mind behind Led Zeppelin's production, uh, arrangements, orchestration, phenomenal. The lyrics <clears throat> and the songs, the endurance and the significance put Led Zeppelin at number three. Number two on my list, and I've been down this rabbit hole recently as well in researching for this video. Generally, this band is talked about with regard to the number one spot in, in a dogfight with those Beatles mentioned earlier. And many would regard them as the greatest rock and roll band of all time. It's razor thin close for me, guys, but 
At number two, Mick, Keith, Bill, Ronnie, and Charlie. The Rolling Stones. Mick Jagger, far better rock vocals than most people give him credit for. Had amazing vocal control. Knew how to throttle it back and perform live for two hours. <clears throat> when you go back to their early stuff, guys, these guys were totally immersed in American blues, and it showed. And they could play anything. They could play anything. And I'm not even sure we would have rock concerts in stadiums were it not for the Rolling Stones. And Keith, guys, not only is he one of the best blues guitarists ever, not a super technically skilled guy when it comes to speed and precision, but when it comes to the heart of a guitarist, there's no better than Keith. And let's face it, is he 130? Still going strong. Charlie Watts, a metronome of a drummer. And then you got Bill and Ronnie. You know, Bill Wyman completes that rhythm section with great precision. And Ronnie filling it in behind Keith. And the songs, the songs, the songs. Number two, Rolling Stones. Before I get to number one, let's do some honorable mentions, shall we? In no particular order. Uh, the first one, I miss the 90s, guys. I was in my blues period. I was listening to The Kings and Muddy and Bluesy Clapton and Zeppelin. I missed alternative grunge, but in the last couple of years, I've gone back and discovered this band I missed. And oh my, are they good. Radiohead, Radiohead, Radiohead. Amazing band, amazing. Next, this is that other band that really played the soundtrack of my youth. Were I younger, with less perspective, they would be high in my top 10. They were significant, especially the guitar. Had two phenomenal rock and roll singers over their years. You know who I'm talking about. Van Halen. Edward, you know, the top five guitarist of all time. Alex. I don't know where he would fall on the list of great drummers, but oh my, could he kick a bass? Michael Anthony, right on time, all the time, filling in with amazing tenor harmony. And then you got Dave, and then you got Sammy. <laughs> Does the music hold up? Nah, it's a little juvenile, a little sophomoric. The Sammy stuff holds up better than the Dave stuff. But even the Dave stuff, it takes you back to a time when you thought a little differently than you do now. Van Halen, honorable mention. Next, and if I do a solo act video, these guys will appear twice. But I put them as an honorable mention on the band list because Tom Petty was never as great as Tom Petty as he was with the Heartbreakers. <clears throat> Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, honorable mention. Next, honorable mention only because of the shortness <clears throat> of their career, the quality of their music definitely would have been top 10. Creedence Clearwater Revival. If those Fogarty's could ever stop fighting like brothers. And then the last honorable mention, again, I missed grunge. <clears throat> but I got to put these guys somewhere because I recognize their significance. They're the only grunge band I have much respect for, Nirvana. Okay, that brings us to the number one rock and roll band of all time. And why are they number one? Let me tell you. Three bands, three bands broke up during my high school years. Some because of death, some because they were fighting with each other. There were three. There were the Beatles, there was Led Zeppelin, and there were Eagles. You know, when the Beatles were done, when John Lennon died, I was like, eh. When Led Zeppelin stopped due to Bonzo's death, I wasn't really into Zepp at that time, eh. But I can tell you this, 
1981, when the Eagles announced that they were over after the long run, I was depressed for a year. Thank God. Their catalog is extensive and lived on. Thank God they came back together when hell froze over. Thank God they're still playing today. Yeah, with Dylan Fry and Vince Sweet Pea Gill. Took two men to fill Glenn's shoes. Great writing, great musicianship. The dueling guitars of Joe Walsh and Don Felder are burned into rock and roll history. Don Henley, better than decent drummer. And oh, those vocals. Oh, those vocals. Glenn and Don. And Randy. Oh, Randy. Unbelievable. They're my number one. Their music holds up. I still listen to them all the time. All the time. They had it all. <clears throat> That's my list, guys. I look forward to reading your comments. Tell me what I missed. Tell me who I got wrong. Can't wait to hear what you have to say. That's all for this one. Grace to you and peace, my friends, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, the word is sharp. I will talk to you soon.